ever gazed at the sky wondering how modern astronomers study this mysterious universe. What would be their cosmic toolkit? And what if the universe itself is a silent storyteller, revealing its deepest secrets through whispers in the cosmic void? Well, humanity now has the answers to all these questions, all thanks to the radio waves originating in deep space. Emissions from giant gas planets, thunderous blasts from the hearts of galaxies, or even signals from a dying star are detected by astronomers using radio waves that are produced in space. As the universe whispers its secrets in the form of radio emissions, radio telescopes on Earth stay prepared to capture them. In order to capture these cosmic murmurs and investigate them, international efforts as well as intergovernmental initiatives are working towards building the world's largest radio telescope. And this is exactly what we will be getting into today. Welcome to the Space Tech Gazette. Today, we are going to explore the Square Kilometre Array Observatory, or SKA Observatory, soon to be the largest radio telescope in the world, to observe the naturally occurring radio waves that come from stars, planets, galaxies, clouds of dust, and many other cosmic happenings. Astronomers around the world have been using radio telescopes for decades. Radio astronomy, a major branch of astronomy that studies the universe at radio frequencies has entirely changed the way we uncover the hidden mysteries of the universe. But how are these radio emissions produced in space? Most of the radio emissions that come from deep space are emitted by electrons. These electrons move through the magnetic fields of celestial objects and every time the magnetic fields change, radio waves are produced. And if you're wondering what a radio wave is, we will tell you all about it. A radio wave is a form of electromagnetic radiation. They're just like the visible light you see with your eyes, but the difference lies in the fact that radio waves have longer wavelengths and lower frequencies than that of visible light. The visible light is powerful enough to help plants perform photosynthesis. However, radio waves require electronic amplifiers to help boost their signal which means that radio waves are weaker in comparison to visible light. Almost all astronomical bodies out there produce some seriously powerful radio radiation. But the strongest of them all are pulses, certain nebulas, quasars and radio galaxies. These are the ones who literally rule the kingdom of radio emissions. Now let's come back to Earth and give our attention to those who not just collect, but amplify and store these radio emissions, the radio telescopes. Specifically designed to collect radio waves from space, radio telescopes don't just receive and boost radio waves, they transform them into signals that astronomers use to develop a deeper understanding of the universe. But how is the SKA Observatory going to take radio astronomy to new heights? What is so special about this observatory? The Square Kilometre Array organisation is working on creating the next generation of the world's largest radio telescopes. Imagine vast arrays of radio dishes and antennas spanning across a distance of not just one, but two continents. Yes, you heard that right. These continents are South Africa and Australia. That's like a telescope garden stretching across thousands of miles. How incredible is that? And believe it or not, once they are built, they will be the most powerful instruments of their kind in the entire world, according to the Australian Government's Department of Industry, Science and Resources. Scientific operations for this grand project in the Southern Hemisphere are expected to start around the year 2028. But why did they choose sites in the Southern Hemisphere for the SKA Observatory? Because it offers a crystal clear view of the entire Milky Way galaxy. And why not? After all, an unobstructed view into the vastness of space is a must-have for any observatory. Now let's jump to the most important aspect of these telescopes, the working of the Square Kilometre Array Observatory. Can you imagine having the capacity to observe radio frequencies between 350 MHz and 15.4 GHz? That's definitely not a human's cup of tea. But for SKA, it's no big deal. In South Africa, a total of 197 dishes, known as the SKA MID, will be placed collectively just to observe radio frequencies in the range of 350 MHz to 15.4 GHz. 
This makes the effective collecting area for radio emissions a whopping 355,000 square feet, or 33,000 square meters. The 131,072 low frequency antennas, on the other hand, are known as SK low and are situated in Australia. The overall collecting area they make up is 4,510,000 square feet, or 419,000 square meter, with a maximum distance of 46 miles, or 74 kilometers, between the two sides of the array. We bet you won't hear such big numbers in the world of radio telescopes, and that's what SKA is all about. Becoming the largest of all radio telescopes in the pages of history. So yeah, the observatory's collecting area is its biggest strength. You may think of it as a giant ear that can hear even the faintest sounds coming from space. So the bigger the ear, the more efficient it is in catching those quiet cosmic whispers. But it's not just the collecting area that makes all the difference. The distance between the two sides of the array, known as the baseline, decides the resolving power. And the collecting area decides how effectively the arrays can detect fainter objects. Didn't understand that? Don't worry, we got this. Consider the baseline like the distance between your eyes. It is this distance that helps you see things more clearly in a three-dimensional view. It works in a similar way for the Square Kilometre Array Observatory. The greater the distance between its antennas, the clearer it can detect farther objects in space. But what about the role of those antennas? Oh, we surely can't forget them. The antennas of SK Low in Australia look very much like trees but with a metallic structure. These metallic trees will be equipped with horizontal branches of different lengths, known as dipoles. Dipoles are elements used for transmitting or receiving radio frequency energy. Being shorter at the top and wider at the bottom, each one of these dipoles will absorb radio waves coming from deep space. The longer the dipole, the longer the wavelength it can absorb. The SK mid and SK low will work together as a team of two players to make SKA a grand success. Using a technique called aperture synthesis, they will be connected to the same receiver and therefore will act as one. It's like a bunch of puzzle pieces fitting together to create a larger, clearer picture. With the help of optical fibers ranging a thousand miles, all the individual dishes and antennas will be linked together. Using smart software, the data from each telescope will be collected and integrated perfectly despite their different locations. As a result, each array will work like a huge super-powered telescope. And that would make SKA Observatory a group of super telescopes that work together to become the ultimate space detective squad. Thus, the name SKA, or Square Kilometer Array, refers to the integration of all antennas and dishes to create a highly effective collecting area of one square kilometer. Wow, that was a lot of technology. The Square Kilometer Array Observatory is going to be a marvel of modern science and technology, one that will reveal the best kept secrets of the universe. Are you ready to step into the age of the SKA Observatory? Do let us know in the comments section below. That concludes our cosmic journey with the world's largest radio telescope right here on the Space Tech Gazette. If this journey ignited your curiosity, remember to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Your support fuels our mission to bring you the latest news in space technology. And as always, keep gazing at the stars, for the cosmos is a boundless source of wonder. If you want to know more about some of the most amazing space technologies out there, you can watch one of these videos next. Until our next Cosmic Rendezvous, stay tuned and keep exploring with the Space Tech Gazette.